He's, um, he's, he's a great teacher in the game. He's worked with a number of excellent, excellent fighters. And we know come September the 12th, he'll have his fighter prepared and he'll be ready to, for battle. Um, this gentleman, like I said, I can't say enough what an outstanding trainer he is. None other than Virgil Hunter. Thanks everybody for coming out here uh, today for this historical event. Um, I know I'm glad to be a part of it. You know, it's these moments again like I reflect in the sport of boxing um, exactly what these young men go through. Me being 62 years of age, I uh, have a chance to see the great Ali some of the great fighters that came before us. And um, one thing that I've always noted about this sport is that the ones who participate and the ones who are involved in sports are the ones who really truly know the sport. So when I look at this event and I see some of the attitudes that come along with such an event, it usually comes from somebody that doesn't know what a fighter goes through from the very first day he sets foot in that gym. You know, we're told to be excellent, we're told to excel at everything that we do in life. We're told that if we get knocked down, get back up. We're told that, you know, never to quit, never to give up. And we have some positive people in places that continue to enforce that. Unfortunately, in this sport, and some people haven't got a grasp of what it takes to really be a fighter these days. Being 48 no is not an easy job. It is not an easy job, particularly when you go back to day one and the obstacles and the hills that you have to climb. See, because I'm sure that this young man cherished the trophy just as much as he cherished a million dollar check. That's the spirit of the sport. That's, that's the life reality of the sport. And I think that once this young man is gone, I think we'll feel the real brunt of his presence and the impact that he had on the sport. And I think if we could just look at the city of Las Vegas during fight week, or Mayweather fight, that a lot of people are very happy because money is flowing, being generated. So we never miss it until it's gone. I witnessed the same thing with Muhammad Ali. Andre Berto has overcome a lot in his life. I'm glad to have made his acquaintance. Been knowing him since he's been 11 or 12 years old. But he epitomizes what a fighter is. He's gotten up. He's persevered, he's overcame, and he's very much in deserving of this opportunity just for that alone, because it would justify anybody else in any walk of life to get a second opportunity or a third opportunity. When you look at that pack in that welterweight division, there's only one standing out. Everybody else is in the pack, but basically people have their opinions. But in this sport, some get a free pass, an accolades, and this, and then another one is never enough. But we are thankful for this opportunity, intend to give it the best job that we are gonna give it. And I think that the champ himself respects the fact that, you know, we come to win, that's how we have to come. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge him you know, for what he's done for the sport too, because Boxing is in my blood. I'm a purist when it comes to the sport. I looked at how his family has maxed out. Each one of them is given a talent and a gift in life. And they took that gift and maxed out. They didn't take a PhD. They didn't take six years of college. He just took that one gift that he had. His dad, him, all of them, and they maxed it out. 
So how many people are out there now that's writing about this sport? We acknowledge everybody, whether you come up to us with a set in one of these rooms, or whether you come up to us with your camera phone, we still acknowledge you. A lot of them, you can't even get us past YouTube, but we still acknowledge you because we understand the sport and we appreciate you participating in the sport. So we love you just the same. So it's time that you give back to the sport. Anybody that has any negativity about it, who's fighting who, we can sit up here all night and go through history and contradict everything that's coming from the negative side. But I'm glad to be part of this. I'm glad to be on Team Birdo. I'm looking for a great night. It's a big thrill for me to be on the opposite side of legends. And hopefully everything will turn out right for us. That's how we intend to do it. Take care. Before I introduce Floyd, I'd like to acknowledge his father, who's in my eyes, like I said, the best trainer in the sport, and he's handled, he's been involved in Floyd's career ever since he was a child, and taught him everything, all the skills that he needed to become the best fighter in the world, none other than Floyd Mayweather Sr. Twelve-time world champion, five different weight classes. It speaks volumes for the hard work and dedication, what it takes to get to this level. By accomplishing all the things that Floyd has accomplished in his career, these are the kind of challenges that he needs to push him to be able to go out the way he wants to go out. And that's why he selected Andre Berto. Andre Berto is a guy that we've been known for many, many years. He's a guy that we were supposed to fight some years ago. He's a former two-time world champion, the former WBC welterweight champion, the former IBF welterweight champion. He comes to us on an outstanding record. We know he's going to bring it, and he's looking to take that all away from Floyd. And one thing we know, do know, that he's going to give it his best, and his best Come September the 12th, we have to see what happens. So none other than the man himself, Andre Berto. Thank you everybody for being here today. Uh, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for bringing me here. Thank God I am with promotions. My man, Linda Ellery. I've got a version of here as well. But uh, it's a long time coming. You know, now we're here, man. Um, you know, anybody that, that knows me and follow my career um, has definitely, you know, seen great things. But at the same time, they see me, you know, go through, you know, some real trials in the last few years. Um, you know, what comes with that is a lot of you know, hard work and, you know, perseverance as well. You know, if I look at myself, you know, just two years ago, you know, I was just in the hospital bed, you know, having surgery on my right shoulder, not knowing if I was even going to be able to come back from that. You know, but, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, it's definitely a blessing for me to continue to stay focused and continue to push hard and now we're here. You know, a lot of people feel that we probably should have, you know, had this fight. You know, a few years back, there's a lot of talk about it, but like I said, I feel like I went through what I went through for a reason. And my time is now. So there's no better day than the present, so I'm looking forward to it. I said, I've been knowing this man right here to the right for a very long time, and he ain't no stranger to me at all. You know, even when I look in his eyes, it looks, like I say, I've been knowing this guy for a while, so it ain't nothing. Nothing changed about the situation, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm down in. We already had me in camp. September 12th. Everybody, we definitely do not want to miss this one. So definitely tune in and down there. And, uh, and I'll see you on the race.
He's broken every record there possibly ever could be in the history of the sport. Come September the 12th, this is our last opportunity to see Floyd Mayweather. I know many people doubt that, but trust me, with the story career that he's had, accomplishing everything that one could ever dream about in the sport. As I mentioned before, we're witnessing history. This gentleman sitting to my right, better take a good look at him, because the things he's accomplished in this sport, we will never, ever see again. There will be other great stars who come along, because there always are. You know, you see great stars come from different eras, you know, just like in 2005 when he fought Charmaine Mitchell, he believed, our team believed, that we would be standing here one day knowing and believing the things that he's accomplished, breaking all the records. And as my great friend Kevin Eiley just wrote recently, those are the kind of things that come along with boxing that when a guy accomplish these kind of things and makes its mark in history is all historical. You know, we oftentimes take for granted just the little things, the little things. You know, oftentimes, you know, some of the media want to criticize certain things, but when you look around, is that this gentleman right here, he's the reason why the game has been changed. The fighters are making more money, the media members are attending more events, and guess what? When they come up around for their contracts and pay raises, guess what? They're getting paid. And it's all because of the big events that this gentleman right here brings to the world. The events that he's participated in and the records that he broke are monumental accomplishments. And like I said, these records will never be broken again. So without further ado, he don't need much of an introduction. He's the best fighter in my eyes to ever do it. And you come September the 12th, you will see another great performance by another other than Floyd Money Mayweather. He's not going to lay down. 
I chose Burl because he's very exciting. Um, and then I look and he said, well, oh, you know, I hear that I've been getting backlash. He's been getting backlash. You know, no one is forced to buy the fight. We, I appreciate it, but no one is forced to buy the fight. But Andre Burrow is going to push for him to the limit. That's one thing that I do know. So, come September 13th, I don't want you guys to damn, I missed the fight. The difference, the difference between Andre Burrow and Manny Pacquiao is that you guys put all the hype in Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Was you, that's what the media did. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what the media did. The media put on the hype of Manny Pacquiao. My job was to go out there and be Floyd Mayweather and be a chess player. And that's what I did. I found a way to win. But this fight is a very, very intriguing match. Very intriguing. Um, you know, I want to acknowledge certain people, some people that's here. Um, we got a fighter that's under Mayweather Promotions, Jaleon Love. <clears throat> we'll give it up for Jaleon Love. Jaleon. I know my voice is worse, but give it up We got another little kid that we sponsor. You know, one thing is all about giving back. And little kid, Rome Diddy. Come on, Rome Diddy. Come here. And a little professional skater. <clears throat> My voice is a little hoarse. You know, I've been up late last night. But um, I'm very, very thankful. Um, Sam, the Watson family, Courtney, um, and so many people. I've been here saying thank you all day to everybody. But this dream all started with just two people. Just two people. Me. And him. This concludes our press conference. Really? Yeah. Can you get one 
Let her down the way real quick. <laughs> <laughs>